in the game for a minute. Clocking in because it's time to get down to business. Starting is a habit, on me I'm good at it. Ask around town, I'm known as the Pop Savage. YouTube, what is going on? Back with my latest video. Back in an installment of Speculation Saturdays. So, something a little bit different for you guys today. Normally, on this segment, I like to suggest Funko Pops that I think are going to go up in value over time. But I decided to use this segment to address the issue at hand. Is our Funko Pops even a good investment to begin with? So before we tackle that issue, I think there's a few things we need to talk about first. So I know a lot of people hit me up about other YouTubers who have taken this idea and have started making videos on it as well. And while it sucks to not really get the credit for the idea you popularized, there's a reason why that they're doing this. The first reason they're doing it is this segment on my channel is very, very popular. I get a lot of views on this segment. Um, a lot of people tune in to watch it and that is what content that other YouTubers are gonna make as well is things that are gonna get views. And the reason why it's popular is a little bit of a secret. Y'all care about Funko Pop values. So it's always been weird to me being part of this community and being part of other collectible communities where, you know, sports cars, Pokemon cars, comic books, that Funko Pop uh, collecting for value is extremely, extremely taboo. And I've never really understood that and it never really made sense to me. The reason why it doesn't make sense is anytime a YouTuber makes a video, whether it be a mystery box or whatever it may be, with the value in the title, it is always the most viewed content. This segment where I talk about Funko Pops investing is an extremely popular topic as well. You guys care about the value of Funko Pops, even if you don't admit to it. I just think at a certain point in any collectible hobby, you start thinking about the value of the collectible you're collecting. I have walls and walls and storage of Funko Pops that if I wasn't concerned a little bit about the value of those things, at a certain point it's physically irresponsible to me to keep spending money on that if I don't think that Pops are gonna hold value long term. And that's not to say you should only collect for the value. Me personally, I collect for fun, but in the back of my mind I always have the idea, is my money going to be lost or can I get it back one day? I still do stand by, buy what you like, because there is a chance that everything you see in all my videos or any other YouTuber's videos is that they can go down to zero. They could be worthless, they could be beanie babies one day, where there's no intrinsic value to it, and you're stuck. So you have to collect what you like, because at a certain point, you're gonna be stuck with it if things go bad. But to answer the original question, I do believe Funko Pops are a good investment, and that's why I make this segment continuously. But before I give you my reason of why I think that's the case, I think it's imperative to me to define what I mean when I say an investment. Now I get a lot of comments on this segment and questions on uh, Instagram uh, telling me that things I've suggested are still on shelves, um, I must be wrong, um, I'm not credible for suggesting something that's still on shelf or hasn't moved up in value, and those comments kind of boggle my mind. Um, an investment is something that goes up in value over time. When I suggest things to you guys, I'm looking at it from a three to five year time frame. There's a clear difference between a flip and an investment. I think the line gets blurred by a lot of individuals in the community. If I suggest you guys something that's a good investment where it's a long-term play and still sitting on the shelves, that should be a good sign to you and not a bad. The things that I have suggested on this channel that have gone up in values already still may be good investments because there's still a chance that they'll go up further down the line and appreciate in value even more. But to me, an investment is something that appreciates in value over time and I think that Funko is a good investment for a few different reasons. The number one and most important reason why Funko Pops to me are a good investment is nostalgia. Nostalgia is probably the weirdest experience we have as human beings because nostalgia does not come with a price tag. So many of us buy things because it reminds us of a certain period of time of our lives. There's a reason why you cannot tell me that Space Jam is not the greatest movie of all time. It's because it's nostalgic for me. I remember when that movie first came out. I remember all the memories, all the toys I got from fast food restaurants, all the stuff I've accumulated over the years is what made Space Jam my favorite movie of all time. I think Funko has done a really good job of capitalizing on nostalgia. They bring out a whole lot of old retro things and not just new things. We're able to capitalize on people's memories. And I think Funko is not in the collectible business, they're in the memories business. That's why I think Funko Pops are nowhere near uh, the same hype as like Beanie Babies were. I think Funko is here to stay 
as long as they continue to do things the way they are now. Now, the second reason I believe that Funko Pops are a good investment is a lot of the pops are limited. The supply and demand aspect comes into play in every single level of investment and collecting. If there's a low supply and a high demand, the price is going to go higher. The things I suggest weekly on the segment are things that I think look good on nostalgic factor and also look good on supply and demand side. As long as Funko continues to make things limited, there's always going to be demand because the fact is people like limited things. There's a reason why every con there's memes going around about a limited piece Funko Pop that nobody cares about the character, but just because it's limited, people want it. People like limited things. And I think that's okay. It's always nice in a collecting hobby to have something somebody else doesn't have. Sometimes that's the whole point of collecting. So with those two factors in mind, I think Funko has some long-term upside as far as being a viable collectible. Now, I'm gonna tell you why I think it's a good investment. If Funko continues to be a good, viable collectible for years on end, the older Funko Pops are going to be a good investment, and here's why. Now, I know a lot of people are aware of my second channel where I do sports cards and Pokemon card openings, and a lot of people think I'm just in it for the money. And that's not entirely true. I grew up first collecting basketball cards and then getting into, Funko, oh, getting into Pokemon cards shortly after. Up until a few years ago, I still had my whole entire thousands of cards basketball collection as well as my Pokemon card collection. The reason why I got rid of it is they were worthless. At a certain point, three, maybe five years ago, nobody cared about basketball cards. I, there's no, around here, I lived in PA before I lived uh, where I do now, and nobody in Pennsylvania cared about basketball. Any dealer I went to didn't have basketball cards. They said this is a baseball card town, no one cares about basketball cards. They were pretty much worthless. I, I had collected for years, and uh, nobody had been caring about basketball cards at that point. Same with Pokemon. I got back into Pokemon shortly before Pokemon Go. I started buying uh, Charizard cards. I was only buying base set Charizard cards. I still had all of my old stuff, uh, the base set, Jungle, Fossil, a few Rocket and a few Neo cards, um, but mainly was just buying straight Charizard base sets uh, cards. And I had about 50 of them at one time because they were about 20 bucks and I told my friend at the time that you know I'm gonna keep buying these one day they may be worth some money but at least I'm only spending about 20 bucks on all these Charizards so um, Pokemon Go hit and as soon as Pokemon Go hit they went up to like 60 bucks a card and you know being the savvy investor I thought I was at the time I cashed out I sold all the Charizards and made triple my money in less than a year which I thought was a really good thing because at that point Pokemon cards back in the 90s were looked at as a really cool thing, but it never got to the point that people thought it was a good investment. It always was a cool collectible, but never a good investment. Now 2020 hits, and sports cards, basketball cards, and football cards, which were never considered good investments, as well as Pokemon cards, are great investments. People are seeing them as actual places to park your money for long-term growth. Those same Charizards that I sold for 60 bucks to during Pokemon Go's uh, peak, which wasn't too, too long ago, are now worth like, ungraded, like 200 to $250 graded. I'd probably be sitting on a little small fortune right now because they were in really good shape. But that's the thing is back then, Pokemon cards and sports cards were not considered good investments. That's where Funko Pops are now. See, back when I was buying Charizards at 20 bucks, that was the only thing I felt safe buying because at the end of the day I would have had a whole lot of Charizards and I still have been fine even they went down to zero. But now I'm back buying Pokemon and basketball cards again because I feel a little bit safer buying the things now because people are looking at them in a different light and I'm able to enjoy the hobby I've always loved and not worry about losing all my money again. Funko Pops are extremely, extremely early into the infancy of their collecting. I know Funko Pops seems like the world to us and the fun in the Funko community, but to the rest of the world, it is not uh, a viable collectible, let alone an investment. So there's so much more room to grow. Think about this for a second. The most expensive Funko Pop in the Funko app is currently going for $13,000. It's the Freddy Funko Leatherface uh, Bloody version, the 12 piece limited uh, Funko Pop. That's the most expensive Funko Pop in the Funko app. The most expensive Pokemon card is the Illustrator Pikachu card. Now I remember, if I can find it by the time I edit this video, I'll show you. There's a magazine that I have from a kid 
where that car was $10,000. Back then when I was a kid, I couldn't imagine a Pokemon car being worth $10,000. It was astronomical price. Uh, I remember Charizard vividly in the Beckett books were like $125 when I was a kid. And that was like extremely, extremely high price for a, a Pokemon card at the time. And um, that car, the Illustrated Pikachu, in a PSA 7, just sold last week or two weeks ago for $375,000 in a PSA 7. There's only 22 of that card that are graded by PSA in existence. And a 7 went for $375,000. Now, whatever person bought that for $10,000 back when I was a kid, made a pretty good investment, but at the time, somebody would have told him it was a dumb idea. Think about it this way. If that Leatherface Funko Pop ends up being a good investment one day, and then Funko Pops are about a tenth of as popular, a tenth of the value of uh, Pokemon, then that Leatherface Funko Pop should be worth ten a tenth of that Pikachu, so $37,500. So that means that Leatherface would have three times more value to go at its current price. And that's more limited. There's only 12 pieces. And the Pikachu's got 22 that are just graded. There's ungraded copies as well. So to me, I just think we're so, so early in the investment side of Funko Pops or the value side of Funko Pops. And that's why I continue to make these segments for you guys is not to inflate the prices of Funko Pops, but to get you guys thinking more clearly that this is such an early uh, stage of this hobby and there's a lot more room that this can go. But I feel personally responsible to make this video. I've made almost a year of these videos talking about Funko Pops and investment. And I think it's uh, responsible for me to explain my position and why I believe their, their investments moving forward, especially since other people seem to be picking up this wave and uh, a lot of people in the community are going to start seeing more of this content, I believe. Again, with any investment, there's always risk. Uh, I know a lot of people are big into Bitcoin now. I have some Bitcoin, not a lot, because I feel like it's risky. As far as Funko Pops, I don't have all of my uh, portfolio, all of my wealth in the Funko Pops, because I think that'd be extremely risky. When you buy things, I do think you have to buy things that you like and that you understand. Every single investment I ever made that I did not understand, I lost money on. Every single one I lost money on that I didn't understand. The ones I did understand, I made money every single time. So I think you always have to buy what you like. I think that still does apply for Funko Pops. And I think you should collect for fun because otherwise it's not, <laughs> I think you miss out on that part of the community if you don't collect for fun with having the investment mentality in the back of your mind. So let me know what you guys thought about this video. I know it's a little bit more controversial maybe than some other videos I made on this segment, um, but I think it's just something we got to get out there the community for uh, and the investment side of Funko Pops does not be as taboo because clearly the views are showing you it's not. And I think more people are starting to think this way as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, like, share, comment, and subscribe to this video. Check out my second channel I mentioned, Savage Breaks as well. And thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Till next time, I'll see you later.